Hi everyone, I'm Carol Kelly, AVLI team member and AP Art History teacher and drama teacher. This is the video that provides a complete example of a lesson done online by a wonderful music teacher. Now, even if you teach in another arts discipline, I think you'll be able to gain inspiration for what you can do in your own course in either a hybrid or an online format. It provides coordinating rubric and assessment that I showed you in the first video on arts education, and it includes a step-by-step -step guide at the end to create a similar project. So, enjoy watching the lesson, and let me know how all of us at the AVLI team can help you as you create your own projects and your own assessments. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. So today, um, as you know, uh, in this first unit, we've been learning how to care for our instruments. Um, so today we're going to be learning how to tune because that's an important process of how to take care of your instrument. Um, there are a few different ways to tune and we're basically going to start with the most basic one um, and we'll cover the more advanced ways to tune later and then once you know how to do all of them, there's a, we could about say that there are three, we can compare why we'd want to use one over the other. So the first way we're going to learn how to tune is just with a basic tuner. And I'm gonna demonstrate how to do this. And then at the end of the week, you're gonna demonstrate to me that you know how to do this. Um, the best way to learn how to do this is also to basically just try to tune your instrument every day. If you wait many days between tuning, depending on where you keep your instrument, if it's hot or cold, it might go more out of tune or less out of tune. But if you try to just tune it every day, it'll be a lot easier. Um, so, <clears throat> The first way we're gonna learn how to tune uh, is with a tuner. So until you're really comfortable um, hearing your pitches and comparing them to either another pitch um, or a different pitch or something, the easiest way to begin is to just use a tuner to basically hear the pitch for you. Um, what a tuner does is basically measures the hertz of a sound wave. So the hertz is the frequency per second. Imagine if the wave is oscillating like this, if it's moving really fast, that's gonna be a very high pitch. If it's moving very slow, that's gonna be lower. So using a microphone and software, either in a standalone device or um, on your computer or a cell phone app, um, you're gonna have your device basically measure the frequency of your sound wave for you. And through that, you'll also learn basically how to do that by ear eventually yourself. Um, so, Let's talk about the app that we're going to use. I recommend this app because it's free and uh, so anybody who has a phone can get this and it's a nice place to start. Um, it's also, I'll show you what it is here. I'm going to click on Pano Tuner. Um, it's also nice because it's a very visual uh, representation of a tuner. So you can see as I'm talking, it's kind of going crazy if you can see it because it's recording, it's, it's picking up my voice and trying to tell me what pitch my voice is playing. So it's kind of going crazy as my voice goes up and down. But if we're quiet and I pluck the A string, you can see it's gonna center on sort of one pitch and we've got this alphabet, musical alphabet, that has an arrow pointing at basically whatever letter we're hearing, whatever letter name note we're hearing. Um, the other ways to tune, just to briefly discuss, is that we can have this device also play a tone. For example, if I hit info, here I, I have different options, and here's my, it says I'm gonna hear 440 hertz if I press play. That is the A on my violin, that's 440 hertz. So if I say play, if you can hear it. We, we could also compare our tone to that sound and make sure they sound the same. That's kind of like the second way to tune. We'll get to that later. Um, I'll stop that. And the third way to tune is basically to compare your note to the other notes on your instrument. So let's say you get the A in tune, then for me to tune my next string, the D string, I would play them together and compare if they sound basically harmonious together or not, and um, we'd work from there. But we're gonna stick with this first way of tuning because it's basically the easiest. And if you can get this down, then you're basically in the clear. Your strings are gonna be in tune for your practice session and then you're gonna enjoy yourself more. When we get back together, the orchestra is gonna sound really nice if everybody's able to tune their instrument really easily on their own. So um, this is really good to practice at home. Um, and with all my private students, it's basically the first thing we start with. 
because if your instrument is out of tune, all your practice is kind of not as productive, not very productive at all. So let's try to tune an instrument. I'm just gonna do this demo on a couple strings because it's basically the same for every string, although I'll talk about if there's any, I don't know, problems that would arise from not tuning all your strings. So I'm a violinist. I'm gonna start tuning of my four strings. I'm gonna start tuning with the A string. That is not my top string. The top string is the E string. But if you play viola or cello, you will be starting with your top string, the A string. The reason we start with that is basically because of an orchestral tradition of where you all start tuning um, the highest note that everybody shares, which in this case is the A note. Um, so we don't start with E. And also, at least for violins, it's a little safer to tune uh, starting with one of those middle strings because how this works um, is that the bridge is held on with pressure from the strings and only pressure from the strings. So if, uh, if we begin with outer strings and let's say everything's kind of out of whack, maybe they're really out of tune, you can more so risk moving your bridge if you're messing with the outer strings first. If you have your A string set up and your D string set up, it kind of helps make sure that the bridge is gonna be secure throughout the whole process. Um, odds are you won't mess up your bridge, but it's also a good idea to check in on how your bridge looks before and after tuning, um, because if it's moved, it can affect the pitch of your strings, it can affect your sound, and it can eventually become um, a violin in, like, injury if it falls. Basically, to check on your bridge, just look at your bridge and make sure the back of it, that side, the back of it, is perpendicular to your instrument. So it should be like a perfect T, perfect right angle right in here. If it's leaning forward or backward, we can talk later about how you would fix that. Um, if it leans too far, it can eventually fall and then that's an unpleasant trip to the violin repair shop. So anyway, for violin, we're gonna start with the A string. I'd recommend basically all string instruments start with the A string and just get in the habit of doing that because that's what you're gonna do in orchestra all the time. Um, and we're gonna begin tuning basically. So um, when you tune, you're gonna have two options some of the time to change your pitch. Uh, we have fine tuners down here and I only have one on the E string so I will be using the pegs. Uh, to tune the other strings. But a lot of you might have fine tuners here. You can use those for small adjustments. If your pitch is only a little bit off, it's nice to use these. They are just like screws, so you can eventually get too far down and it won't screw anymore, or too far up and it won't screw off anymore. And in that case, you have to adjust with a peg and get your tuner back where it's supposed to be. But um, we also have, that brings us to these pegs, which I'll be using mostly, except for my E string. Um, and these also basically work like screws, but they don't, um, they're not actually, uh, you know, drainy like the way screws wind in, but they do need to be turned in and out if they're loose or if they're sticking. Um, so for example, if you, if you are tuning your string and you can't get your peg to stay in its place, it keeps slipping, you're gonna wanna push in and turn like a screw. Um, if you turn and then push, uh, it's not gonna really work. You have to turn and push at the same time like a screw. Um, so as I said, I'm gonna be using my pegs to tune my lower three strings because they don't have fine tuners. And I'll use my fine tuner for my E string. For the sake of this demo, I'm just gonna tune my A and E strings because I think at that point it gets maybe a little redundant to tune B and G, but I'll still demonstrate a little bit on the, metron uh, on the tuner that they're in tune. Um, so basically, I'm gonna take my device that's ready to go, it's listening, and I'm gonna start with the A string, and I can, uh, I can pluck if I'm a little uncomfortable about how to hold the violin while I tune, I can just pluck with it you know, in basically any position, or I can bow, and I'll show you both ways. But I'm basically gonna pluck the A string, and then observe where my tuner falls. Now there's a few reasons why your tuner might not uh, indicate a perfect A or might even change pitch. If your strings are really old, you'll see a difference in the pitch between the attack and the decay of the note. So when the note first speaks, it might be at a certain place on the tuner, and then it might move slightly as the note decays, and that often means you need new strings because they're going a little false. See? So we would say my A is maybe a little bit 
a hair flat. So I'm saying that because it's going, it's falling a little bit to the left of A, left from my perspective. I don't know if it's switched. Um, and it's closer, a little too close to A flat. We're also looking for the number of hertz that we want to hear. I want to hear it tell me, see it tell me, that A is 440. And right now it says it's 439.1. So we're going to move that up a little. So to move it up, I'll have my tuner here. I'm going to watch my tuner as I go to make sure I'm approaching the right pitch and not like imagining some other sound that I'm that's not in tune. And I'm going to hold my violin by the neck if I'm not in playing position. You can tune like this, but for beginners, it's often a lot easier to see what you're doing if you just hold the neck in one hand. Um, I'm gonna hold the neck in the hand that is opposite where my peg is. So if I follow the A string up, if I don't know what peg to turn, I follow it up into the box. I see, okay, it needs this peg. This peg is on the right side of my instrument. So I'm gonna hold the neck with my left hand and kind of brace against my right hand sort of like this, just in case it's unscrewing or something like that. And I'm gonna use my thumb on my left hand to pluck this basically constantly so I can hear the pitch change. Now I'll turn the peg, either loosening and unwinding the string like this, or turn it back up, plucking as I go. And as I go, I'm looking for this, let's see, let's get our tuner back here. Can you see it? Looking for that to tell me that it's on A. Now we go down, that says A flat. Now maybe it's too high, B flat. It says 458 hertz, so we gotta go back down to 440. Pretty good. Uh, it's a little harder to be accurate when you're plucking, um, both for the reason I stated earlier about the older strings, um, and also just when it comes to the tuner, you know, it hears the best that loud beginning sound, and then other sounds kind of start to interfere. So if you're unsure and you're able to bow as well, that might give us a more accurate reading. Yeah, down here. And we could do the same thing, we could bow. Change. And that's pretty nice. And we, uh, we want it to be at 440 hertz. It's probably going to be pretty hard to get it exactly at 440.0, um, especially with your bow changes and stuff. But as long as it's within a couple decimal points, you know, if it's 440.3, 440.4, you know, or 339.3. Eight, like that's that's pretty good. Um, we're basically aiming for just a couple cents within 440. Um, if you're at 441, it's going to start sounding different. And if you have multiple violins playing open strings at all slightly different frequencies, it can sound a little. We'll say, in my opinion, it's subjective. It sounds bad. So <laughs> we want everybody to basically be as close to 440 as possible. Um, so once we have that done, uh, we're going to go into the next string. And some people might be able to tune more advancedly and play their strings together. We're not gonna do that this week for the sake of this week. I want everybody to basically show that they can do this because if everyone can do this, the odds of everybody playing in tune together are very good. And then down the line, as we learn more advanced ways of tuning, we'll, we'll go over that and test that too. You're welcome to like look ahead basically, but um, this is where we're gonna start. So let's say I do that. I would go to my next string and it, I'll bring the, this back down here. I'm going to play the D string. And I want to make sure it's in the middle of that green line. Within a few cents. And E. Now let's talk about the E because that's my only chance basically to also demonstrate the fine tuners. Um, I'm going to put my E out of tune a little bit by unscrewing it. So imagine a screw 
or like the face of a clock, if you have the numbers go down, I'll be turning the pitch down. You can probably hear it change, I hope. Um, now I'll use the fine tuner again to bring it back up. Until it's right on the middle of that E. Cool. And so that's what we would do there. Now notice I want to emphasize that I'm plucking as I go the whole time. You know, I'm not like uh, plucking and then turning a lot and then plucking again. You know, if I do that, if I pluck, like, oh, say my, I'll start here. Okay, my A is too low. If I just pluck it, move it without hearing what I'm doing. Well, muscle memory honestly made it end up pretty in tune for me, but you're gonna wanna pluck as you go so you can hear the pitch changing. And part of the reason for that is uh, that, especially with certain strings like the E string that is really thin, if you're changing the pitch really quickly or um, far, uh, you can snap a string. So just, just do small changes and listen as you go. It doesn't take very much of a turn on the pegs to put the string in or out of tune. So just little movements. Um, also, if you avoid moving anything too far or fast, you'll probably avoid getting your pegs loose, which is usually what happens most of the time. Um, students turn them and then they can't get them to stay. So just do little movements and then if they're not staying, turn and push and try to like screw them back into the peg box. That's usually what people encounter as, as their main uh, issue with that. Um, if you're struggling to move your pegs at all because they're really stuck, uh, just keep trying basically. They'll move eventually uh, or maybe ask like a parent to help with that. Sometimes I have to help students with that because sometimes they're really extremely stuck. Um, if they are really extremely stuck, excuse me, they are really stuck, uh, next time you change your strings, there's a little trick that you can use to make them smooth, uh, turn more smoothly, and that's uh, that when you take them out, if, uh, when you take the pegs out of the peg box uh, to wind a new string, you coat where the peg contacts the peg box with a little graphite, and then it'll turn really smoothly, and it shouldn't slip. It, it's a pretty cool, neat little trick, basically. Yeah, so. Um, so that's how you tune. You're going to try this week to use your tuner. This one's Pano Tuner. Uh, piano without an I. P-A-N-O Tuner. Uh, I don't know why it's Pano Tuner. It's probably because it's a free app or something, but it does work really well. And I find that for most students, it's the easiest way to see if your note is in tune. Um, there are other ways. There's uh, other tuning devices like the standalone chord tuners. Those are really nice. There's others that clip on, uh, you know, for example, maybe to the scroll of your instrument. I don't recommend those because they, with acoustic instruments, they tend to become a little less accurate because they're picking up vibrations from even like the pegs and everything, which kind of interfere with the sound. If you're playing an electrically amplified impl uh, instrument, they work fine, but because of the vibrations of the instrument, they don't work as well. So I don't recommend those. Um, but you can find a different app, anything that will measure the amount of hertz that is being produced in your physical space will work. So find an app that works or use this one and use it to tune all four of your strings. Uh, just go slow and be careful. And even if you don't practice, just try to tune your instrument every day because you'll find the more you keep it in tune, the less you have to tune it. If you tune it once today to practice and then try to do it again next week, it could be really out of tune and maybe it's more difficult and your pegs are sticking more or something. Just keep them nice and you know smooth and try to turn them a little bit every day as you keep your instrument maintained. Remember that this is a process of how to maintain your instrument. It's not just so that you can practice well and you can play in tune well with others, although that's sort of like the most important goal, but it's also to maintain your instrument and uh, yeah, basically keep the health of your instrument you know, in working good order. Um, so, yes, I, if I'm not repeating myself, next week I will see you use a tuner to tune all four of your strings on whichever instrument you have selected to enjoy. Uh, and other than that, I will be signing off for now, and you can let me know if you have any questions about that process or encounter any difficulties with your bridge or pegs, and we can work from there. So uh, good luck this week, and hopefully your practicing sessions are starting from a really nice point
your strings are nice and in tune and uh, that's, yeah, that's the best way to begin basically. So thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next week. So that's the great lesson uh, that Music Teacher has shown you. And now let's go through the rubric and the assessment process with step-by-step -step instructions of how she created this and how students will be assessed. To review part of the process that we went through in the first video on arts assessment on, in online education, this is the concept that the teacher used in terms of backwards design to create her lesson and to devise her rubric. She is looking for, in the yellow highlighted, the proper tuning and anticipation of ensemble work, the introduction to string structure and a sound generation and sound waves, the tuning. Um, and the bridge perspective, parts of the instrument and relationship to tuning and playing, building knowledge there. And the objective first step in the process of playing, exploration and auditory experimentation and awareness. And the rubric that she devised will be provided to the students in terms of um, everything that's under tuning assessment, the 12 possible points for them to show her that they've gained knowledge in doing that by daily practice of it. And then she'll deliver the questions verbally in a flip grid format and the students will have an opportunity to respond to her. And then finally, what is the step-by-step -step in terms of how this lesson was created? Here's how it worked. The lesson was recorded on Zoom. All you'll need to do is start a meeting and the teacher was the only person in the meeting. She clicked on record and she taught her lesson. Step number two, Zoom will process the meeting once you've finished it and it will automatically be saved on your computer. Step number three, you can then upload the finished video of your meeting to YouTube and you would do this by transferring it to one of the editing devices that are available online, such as Screencast-O-Matic. They will create for you an MP4, which can be easily uploaded onto YouTube. Then, number four, you can share your video with your students. You can either do it just by sending it uh, through them in terms of email, you can upload it to your LMS system, or as I say, you can create a link to YouTube for them to watch the lesson that you delivered. Step number five, you want to create a Flipgrid topic and this will be for your assessment. You'll share the rubric with your students in terms of the point value and then any questions that you want to deliver to them that move toward that enduring knowledge concepts, you can deliver that live. That's what this teacher did in a Flipgrid video asking for their responses. Step number six, the final component is students will show you their tuning skills in this case <laughs> um, or whatever you've asked them to illustrate in terms of their uh, technical process knowledge and then you'll have them answer the questions you've posed if you have any of them by simply hitting a big green plus sign in Flipgrid. You will get their results because you will automatically find out when you go to your educator's site for Flipgrid that they have posted videos and you can respond either in written comment or with a return video. So that's how it's put together, and uh, let me know if you need further help. Thanks so much. This is Carol Kelly from AVLI. Have a great day.